Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. This is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, we had a, a dual question. A gentleman wanted to know what the history of Morial was, and then he went on to say he'd recently watched our tape on the gifts of the Spirit, where you explained the gifts of the Spirit, and he, he commented that obviously you have the gift of teaching, and he went on to state that some charismatic churches have gift tests, and etc., those type of things. But how do you know for sure what gift the Holy Spirit gives you so you can better benefit the body of Christ and bring honor to the gift giver? Okay. Well, very briefly, concerning the history of Moriel, I had been saved in the Jesus movement, a hippie. Then I got involved with these groups, and most of them became cults. We won't go there now. I was saved to the children of God. Then I was in something called Kobu, Church of Bible Understanding, which had originally been the Forever Family. But there were other similar groups. Uh, eventually, I became a Baptist who was a conservative charismatic. I was conservatively charismatic in terms of charismatic gifts, but I was essentially Baptist or Baptistic. Um, I would have called myself a Baptist. Um, although I did at various times attend the Nazarene Church, because I am Wesley on Arminian, basically speaking, uh, I would be have been something similar to what's known as a, uh, a free will Baptist. I believe man has fallen and all that stuff, but I don't believe that God has created some for heaven and some for hell. Um, anyway. From there, I became a, I suppose you'd say, conservative Pentecostal. I went into a Pentecostal church, but I made it clear I did not believe that tongues was initial evidence, even though I believed in the gift of tongues. I believed in spirit baptism, and I was there as a traditional Pentecostal, except that unlike many traditional or probably most traditional Pentecostals, I didn't push the tongues thing, even though I believed in tongues, and still do, understood scripture. When in Britain, I left Israel now, I was in Britain, uh, after seminary, Bible college, American Kingdom Now Dominion Theology, with its replacementism, began coming into the church in Great Britain, into Pentecostalism, and there was a departure away from traditional premillennial Pentecostalism. One of the agents that the devil used was Rick Godwin from America, who's been buried in one scandal after another in the newspapers in San Antonio, in league with the Shearman brothers, who were basically doctrinally very ignorant, extremely ignorant, hype, total hype. And then came the avalanche of money preachers when Christian TV began to arrive in Britain. I warned that the same people who made Born Again a household joke in America would now do it in Britain, and they did when the Elam movement, the big Pentecostal movement in Britain, with which I'd been associated, attended an Elam church, began pushing Morris Cirillo, and all these scandals happened in the newspapers in Britain with Cirillo and so forth. My position with Pentecostalism became untenable. I'd been an evangelist, the evangelistic director of the Pentecostal mission to the Jews, because I spoke Hebrew, because my family were Israeli, etc. So I left, and I left with nothing, and gave up whatever little security I had, and I began Moriel at that particular time. Uh, and the Lord blessed it. And 
it struggled tremendously in its early years, struggled spiritually, struggled financially. I was sued by the Yila movement at one point, or they brought litigation against me to try to silence me on certain issues. It was very ugly. But in time, God blessed it and prospered it to what it is today, and it is still, by God's grace, growing. As long as it continues to serve him faithfully, may it continue to grow, and may he keep us faithful. That's that's Moriel. Um, it began as a mission to the Jews, but it expanded to ministry to people of other religions. It's multifaceted now. It has a teaching ministry. Obviously, there's Moriel TV on Roku TV, as well as on YouTube and Vimeo. There's a teaching ministry, there's an evangelistic ministry to people of other faiths, beginning with the Jews, involving evangelism and apologetics. There's discernment. We refute error in the church. We stand up against it. We believe it's scriptural and important, necessary to do that. But we're basically a mission organization. We plant churches or we help people plant churches that remain affiliated to Moriel. But they're all autonomous. They're all self-determining. It's simply an affiliation based on common doctrine and a relationship. Um, we're not into empire building, we're into building the kingdom of God. So we plant churches and uh, or, or involved with people who do, and we have affiliated churches that affiliate with us and do all the things that a church does. But it's not a denomination or a hierarchy or anything of that, that nature. It's just a, a, an affiliation. A fellowship of fellowships, if you will. Um, and, of course, there's the missions themselves, much of which is to do with Israel, supporting the local congregations in Israel and work Jewish and Arab, but our work in the third world with children, the Philippines, Africa, we're opening in India, AIDS kids, children rescued from the rubbish dumps in the Philippines and so forth. Our ethos has always been it's not enough just to point out error and say what's wrong. The first and foremost defense against error is always, of course, a knowledge of the truth. So begin by teaching the truth. Then you can identify the error. There's no point going around, as some people who call themselves discernment ministries do, but all they are is, are witch hunters. They just go around looking for error, and they're on Internet and blog all day, back and forth about what's wrong with this one what's wrong with that one these silly people um, you ask them where's the evangelism where's the missions where's the church planting where's the charity where is helping the persecuted church which is something else that Moriel's involved in when you ask them those questions where's the great commission they don't have any evangelism hardly if, if any they don't have any discipleship it's only about finding error in others they become oblivious to the fact that they're in error themselves. And some of these people are crazy. They'll even lie and say things that are false. This one deranged woman in South Africa who, who has some kind of a blog site called Discerning the World. Um, and she's, everyone who knows her tells us she's a psycho. Um, another, you know, is this, this Gisborne woman in England, this Christian feminist who's now into the flat earth stuff. And she's just, these people are, 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 they're off the wall. They're completely off the wall. Be careful of people whose ministry is going around defining error without teaching the truth. Once you're teaching the truth, you can define error. But don't try to define error unless you're first giving the truth. Don't tell people what's wrong unless you tell them what's right. However, talk is cheap. Don't just tell people what's right with words. Show them what's right with deeds. That's what Jesus did. He didn't just say what was wrong. He said what was right. But he didn't just say what was right with his words. He said it was what he did. Hence, Go on our website. See our work in the third world with the poor children, Philippines, Africa, and so forth. Your prayers are coveted for the new work we're beginning in India with the Dalit children this year. Uh, 
there's certain things we do in China and Vietnam and certain communist countries. We well, I shouldn't even say this. There's certain countries we operate in with the underground church that we can't discuss what we do, but it, such ministry exists. It's important that we do what's right, not just say what's right. We want to preach the gospel. We want to help the persecuted church. We want to reach out to the poor, especially impoverished children. We want to teach right doctrine. Then we have a basis to address false doctrine. So that's pretty much the way Moriel is. Uh, make of it what you will. Uh, we welcome and need support for our missions, but we don't ask for money unless we ask the Lord for it. But what we do ask for, what we really covet, what I ask for, what I beseech you for is your prayers. Please pray for our work. Please pray that the Lord uses us for his glory to reach unsaved people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We want to see more Muslims saved than we've seen Muslims saved. We want to see more people saved out of cults. David Lister leads our work among the Mormons. We've seen many people influenced in the Roman Catholic Church, people saved out of Catholicism, uh, which we hold to be a false Christianity. We oppose the ecumenical movement as a deception of the devil, as a seed of Antichrist. Nonetheless, the Lord leads you to support us. God bless you. But it's not your money we're asking for. It is your as. We need your prayers. God will provide the money. That's Muriel. Visit our website. See what we do. See our missions. See our heart. That's what we do. We are certainly not perfect. We are certainly in the process of learning every day. We have made mistakes. But for the most part, what we've done has been blessed of the Lord and has been right. Uh, and it's not about us. It's about Jesus, and it's about people like you. That's that. That's it. That's all I can really tell you about Moriel. It means in Hebrew, God is my teacher. We don't want people following men, including this man. We want them looking to Jesus first and foremost. You can agree, as I've said with Jacob Prash, to the exact extent that Jacob Prash agrees with the Word of God. You can follow me or anyone else in Moria, be it uh, David Lister with the Mormons or be it uh, any of uh, the Scott evangelizing the Buddhists in, in our branch in Thailand. Or you can follow us, our missionaries, our preachers, to the exact extent we're following Jesus. It's about him. It's not about me. It's about him and him alone. Secondly, it's about you and it's about reaching the unsaved. That's what Morial's about. There are other good ministries out there that we endorse, whose, whose work we sanction. We're not the only one. There are others out there that we know to be honest and in it for the Lord and who God is blessing and using. There's a number of organizations that we would, without hesitation, point people to. And we have done. Uh, all kinds. Yes, we're in an age of apostasy. But you have some wonderful people at Missionary Aviation Fellowship and Africa Inland Mission, Sudan Interior Missions, OMF China Inland Missions, there's some wonderful people doing some wonderful work still. There really are. There really are. We, the voice of the martyrs that helps the persecuted church. Um, there are people who reach Jews with the gospel. Chosen people ministries. Christian uh, witness to Israel. All of them are worthy of your prayers and, and, and support. Uh, we are not paramount to what God is doing. We're just one ministry, one organization, one group of people, one network of churches that, by His grace, have the privilege of being a part of what He's doing at this time in history. 
Such it is, Moriel, God is my teacher, and God is your teacher. Now the next question, uh, was uh, about how you know your gift. The person does not ask about charismatic gifts. He specifically asks, or she asks, I don't know if it's male or female, about ministry gifts. Okay, you have the gift of teaching, you have the gift of pastor, you have the gift of evangelist. How do you know? When somebody is born and they begin to grow up, certain talents, certain aptitudes are going to become obvious. When little children go to grade school, some are going to be more inclined to, towards math. Some are going to be really good at reading. Some are going to be more artistic or creative. Some are going to have a better aptitude for music. Music, mathematics can be related. Uh, literature and art can be related. These things will always overlap to a degree intellectually and academically. Well, ministry gifts are the same. In fact, in Ephesians, it doesn't say pastors and teachers, it says pastor teachers. A pastor must be able to teach. Well, someone can be a teacher without being a pastor. You cannot be a pastor without having the capacity to teach right doctrine. That doesn't mean you're going to be a theologian or an expositor or a teacher as your main gift, but it means you will have the capacity to teach. These things overlap. How do you know if you are an evangelist? Well, we're all witnesses, even if we're not evangelists, even if we're not somebody who can stand on a platform and preach the gospel to a large group of people and see results, we can, or, or whatever. We can all witness and all should witness one-on-one. -on -one. We can all hand out tracts or knock on a door. In other words, we can't all fish with a net, but we can all fish with a rod or a pole. Because you don't have the gift of evangelism doesn't mean you're not a witness. The wise man delivers souls. Because you may not have the gift of teaching does not mean that God will not reveal things to you through his word. Because you may not be a pastor does not mean you should not be concerned for the spiritual welfare of the brethren, particularly new believers, and for their growth. But how do you know? Well, quite naturally it's going to be evident if a kid is good at math or if he's good at foreign languages or if he or she are good at piano it's going to be quite evident at, at a young age what their natural aptitudes are spiritually it's no different if someone walks with the Lord has a prayer life reads the scripture they're in fellowship they witness it's going to be obvious this person has the gift of evangelism. This person is pastoral. This person has the gift of teaching. It'll be obvious. It'll come natural. It is not something to be anxious about. Oh, Lord, what's my gift? I don't know. A little kid isn't anxious. If he's unusually good at math or music or in foreign language, that's going to be apparent. It's the same with spiritual gifts it will naturally become apparent. Now, in the physical world, in the physical world, the natural world, parents and teachers play a role in helping to identify natural abilities and cultivating them. In the church, it's the same. Older believers, Christian parents, if you have Christian parents, older brethren in the Lord, the leadership of the church, pastors and so forth, they have a role in identifying the gifts in younger believers and helping to cultivate them. We deal with this on our teaching of Esther and her relationship with Mordechai, her mentor, as it were. It's natural. It's not something you should be anxious about. It will come to be conspicuous if not initially to you 
certainly to others who are around you who've been saved longer than you have. God will speak through Christian parents, through pastors, leadership of the church, other believers. It's natural, just as natural as a little kid who's good at art or good at math or good at language, just as natural. Thank you so much for your question. My name is James Jacob Pash, Memorial Ministries. God bless. Thank you, Jacob.